Hello everybody. Our next camera is the Contax G1. Uh, this was after Kyocera had taken over Contax. It was uh, first made in 1994. Uh, the G1 and the G2 rangefinders both have titanium bodies. They use a uh, Contax G mount which is not like the old uh, pre-war German Contax. It uh, is mostly electrical. Uh, it has a motor connection to the body. Um, it can be set to be a uh, point and shoot, basically. Set the shutter to the auto setting, and you set the focus, and it's a point and shoot. You can also set it to manual everything. Um, they use Zeiss lenses. They were actually made, manufactured by Kyocera, but uh, they licensed the uh, Zeiss designs. There were six primes made for this from 16 to 90 millimeters. The G1 couldn't use a couple of the wider ones unless it got a firmware upgrade. And then there was a zoom, a 35 to 70 millimeter zoom that the G1 couldn't use at all. It has five electrical contacts to talk to the lens. Uh, it needs seven, so that lens was pretty much just made for the G2. Um, the shutter goes uh, from one two thousandth of a second to 16 seconds when this is set to automatic mode. In manual, it goes from one two thousandth of a second uh, to one second. Um, either way, you also get a bulb setting. When it's in, when it's in auto, you can also um, do plus or minus, uh, I think that's 3 EV um, in, in third stop steps. Uh, use passive autofocus uh, phase detection. Um, some people didn't like it. It's a little slow and hunts and doesn't work real, real well in low light or when you're really up close but then you can always switch to manual because it does still have an actual rangefinder even though it, it uh, does auto focusing uh, it's pretty sweet it's got a diopter built into the viewfinder these buttons control the drive mode uh, single shot continuous it would do two frames per second and then you set uh, your ISO it reads DX encoded film but you can set it to do compensation or if you're using uh, film that's not DX encoded from ISO 6 to 6400. I got the smaller flash with it, the TLA uh, 140. It's guide number 7 meters. It's a pretty, pretty decent little flash. A really nice thing is it's got a couple extra contacts. Talks to the camera and it'll do through the lens metering for the flash. So, oh, the test light came on. You can see it's pretty bright. You can do an auto exposure lock. You turn it on here, and then, you know, if you're doing a backlight subject or, you know, whatever it is, you get it exposed where you want, flip that on over from on to uh, auto exposure lock. Now it's locked into whatever I was pointing at over here and the exposure will remain the same here. Otherwise, you know, it's a normal, it's a half press. It'll focus and set the exposure lock. I've only shot a couple of uh, rolls through this, but I'm really liking it, even though it's the uh, older one and it doesn't have the upgrade for the wider lenses. The only lens that I have is this Zeiss Planar. It's 45 millimeter f2, goes to f16, one thing is kind of cool, I'm blanking on the uh, name of the website, but they do really in-depth testing of lenses. And this particular lens, the Zeiss Contax 45mm, is the second sharpest lens ever made. The only one that beat it out is uh, a no longer made 200mm L-series Canon. It is so crisp, even all the way opened up to f2. The out of focus circles, the bokeh, um, is not as good as it could be. It's a six blade design. 
Um, I think it looks great, but you know, it's not super circular. If you get some sun stars or something, uh, you can see the hexagonal shape. But I am loving this camera. I'm sure I've forgotten some, some details. But uh, if I did, I'll put them over in the blog when I post the results. So I'm going to run uh, some slide film through it next, and I'll see you then.